iOS fans, it's me, Pete. I'm coming to you with another deck review, and this time around, it's those Trixie Skaven. So I'm going to be using this in a couple of matches coming up, and I'm going to be interested to see how they play, because I'm going all-out objective-y. I'm not going completely all-out objective-y, but I have got a fair few objective cards in my deck, and I'm not looking to get too toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever I'm coming up against very early. It's very similar to the other time I've played, uh, but I have made a few adjustments, so I'm going to run through them now, and you can let me know what you think. Starting off with objectives, I have taken hold objectives 1 to 5. Yeah, I thought they were going to be boring, and I thought they'd had their day once we saw all these new shiny objectives coming out. But you know what? I actually think they do have a nice place. They're really easy to get with Skaven if you're fast and you've got enough manoeuvrable cards in there. They're pretty much guaranteed glory every turn. And once you've got that glorious glory, you can buy all these shiny upgrades that you can desire. The next card I've picked is Cover Ground. For Skaven, if I can get a plus one move or a sprint off or a sudden skittering, this card will be a winner. It's an instant win and I'll, that'll be a mid-turn glory. Always worth it. Next one is Escalation. This is two glory and I think it's nearly always going to be a given in my deck. If you're doing well, you're going to be buying loads of upgrades. If you're doing badly, hope your opponent will then be doing well and will buy loads of upgrades. Either way, you can get two glory out of it there. Master of War, play a ploy, play an upgrade, and score an objective. It's not the easiest one because you've got three different things you've got to do, but at the same time, I don't think it's that hard as long as things go your way a little bit. Ploy Master, play three ploys. I don't know what the odds are, but you must have something like a 50-50 chance of getting three ploys in your hand when you first draw, and you've got a repick as well. So if you can get that early doors, it's great. And if it's a little later in the game, you'll know what's in your deck. So you know whether you can throw it or keep it. Supremacy. This is another one to go along with my hold objectives one to five. Hopefully if I get supremacy in my hand and some objectives, I can double up on my glory. And the last two cards are related. I've gone for tactical genius three to five and tactical supremacy three and four. So hopefully if I can get three, four and five near me, I can get those real easy. And hopefully along with supremacy, if some of them are in my opponent's half, I might have to work a little harder, but hopefully I've got enough manoeuvrable cards in there that I can still pull that off. I was a bit undecided whether I go for the Tactical Supremacy 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 to spread my odds a bit, or double down on Tactical Genius 3 to 5 and Tactical Supremacy 3 and 4. And I figured I'd try and double down in the end, because if I can get both of those cards off, that'd be 5 glory, and that's a massive jump. So after that, I've got my upgrade, where hopefully I'll spend all that glorious glory I've just won. First card I've gone for is Skitter Scurry. Now this has been FAQ'd recently, so if I get scratched to Charge once he has Skitter Scurry on, he can move one extra hex after the move and another extra hex after he's done the attack. That could be incredibly useful for his maneuverability and in general it will just help me kit him out of the way whenever I need to. Unfortunately I won't be able to use it to score cover ground because it's an extra hex after he's moved. Next one is Acrobatic. All my guys roll dodge except for Kirk but you know who needs Kirk. So an extra dice on defense means that some of my guys are going to be rolling three once they're inspired. That's pretty tasty. Demonic Weapon. This one has always done me well, I think. Uh, it's great to go on any of my lesser Skaven, maybe my Hungering Skaven or someone like that. Charge them in, do an attack, and make them a worthwhile target for my opponent to have to consider. Hopefully they'll take them out. I'll be able to bring them back and use them again to attack again in the next round. And Legendary Swiftness, plus one move there to help me get cover ground. Shade Glass Darts. This is a new addition, along with Skit Scurry and Acrobatic. I think the darts will help me use some of my Skaven to shoot from range when I'm not wanting to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but I want to try and maybe pick someone off or just push someone back a bit. Soul Trap. Soul Trap is going to be going on Scritch. It's not going on anybody else, that's for sure. Mm, maybe the one with Demonic Weapon if, you know, things are going really well my way and Scritch is really safe, but it's probably going to be Scritch. And then I've gone for the Blazing, Shadowed, Dazzling and Fractured Keys. My hope is that these come out late in the game and I've got plenty of glory to buy them all and in my last few turns I'm just going to be jumping onto objectives. Hopefully I'll have my Tactical Genius or Supremacy or Supremacy 3 to 4 already out of the way but if they come along too, well more the merrier. And my ploys, the things I'm going to use to win the objectives to get the glory to buy the upgrades. Start off with Musk of Fear, pretty much a given. Puts one of you guys on guard which also inspires them, it's a brilliant card for Skaven. Sudden Skittering, ability to do a sprint move, that'll help me cover the ground, and it also means I can pretty much clear the whole board depending on where I've got a Skaven. That's always good to keep somebody just wondering what you're going to do. Scratching in the Shadows, basically a distraction, but the Skaven flavour, ugh, Skaven flavour. Always handy if somebody's sitting on an objective that I want, that should be mine mine, or if I just really want to shove someone around, maybe get them into a range of Scritch to have a good stab stab at them. There are always more. Bring back a Skaven, inspires them as well, and it's always handy to have someone pop up in the opponent's backfield. 
and then confuse priorities. I need objectives 3, 4 and 5 to be where I need them. So worst case scenario, if some of them are in my opponent's half, I can use this to switch some around and give them to me. Then confusion. Obviously, almost definitely going to try and use this to play on two of my games to inspire both of them. But it's also handy to move my opponent's guys around or swatch one of mine with one of theirs if they're standing on an objective and I want it. Jewel of Wits. Almost a given in my deck nearly all the time. The ability to put two more cards in my hand is really helpful. Earthquake. Partly to try and play off against an opponent's earthquake but also because if I can move people into position I can't quite get somewhere earthquake might be the thing that helps me shove everybody onto the objectives I need also helps me push my opponents off and maybe take the place misdirection if I've got a scaven on an objective and my opponent tries to distract them off I want them to stay put this is going to hopefully help me with that then sidestep again it'll inspire my scaven and it helps shove one of my guys around increases my maneuverability always handy and the last addition is spores of battle being able to play an upgrade without having to pay a glory will be very handy, especially if I'm a bit starved of glory. I haven't got ready for action in my deck. I did consider going up to 24 cards, but I just think that's maybe pushing it a little bit. So I've left ready for action out for now, but I've put Spores of Battle in. If I was going to get rid of anything, I might get rid of Misdirection to put in ready for action. But at the moment, I just can't justify it enough. I've had Misdirection be useful a couple of times now, and I think I want to keep it that way. Cards that I had or previously had in my deck that I've removed are expendable because whilst it's useful, it does do a wound to your opponent. I can't justify over some of the other cards. And Festering Blade. I do like Festering Blade, but it's a very specific upgrade on a specific Skaven. And if they're not in the right position, it's an upgrade that I might not get any use out of. Whereas Shade Glass Darts, I can use on anybody. Might not do as much damage, but I can use it on anybody and it's got a longer range. On my objective side, where I've made the most changes, I've got rid of Tactical Supremacy 1 and 2, purely because I've gone for 3 and 4 with Genius 3 and 3 to 5. I also got rid of Alone in the Dark, because it's too dependent on whether my opponent's going to end up staying next to each other, or whether I just completely forget and have my Skaven all huddle up. I also got rid of Conquest, with 5 Skaven bodies, I think that one's just a bit too hard to pull off, if I'm lucky and they all survive. Plus it's a third end phase card. I also got rid of Live to Fight Another Day. It's a third end phase card and it's one glory. I just can't validate that to keep Scritch in my half. If I need to run him away, I'm going to run him away and I'm going to keep him away from everybody else. I think already Scritch is the greatest because whenever I pick the card that means my warband leader has to take someone out, I can't roll for Toffee on them after that. It's a nice to have mid-turn glory if I can do it, but at the same time Skaven just aren't stabby enough. I might take this in a tournament list possibly i'd get rid of maybe ploy master or maybe master of war and put in scritch is the greatest if i know i'm coming up against more corn and stuff like that i can go after the chuckle brothers or i can go after some petitioners with spoke rewards but i'm putting it back in the pile for now maybe i'll try it later and the last one is crushing force for me to get that off i've got to wound somebody most of the time before somebody else like scritch or crook can move in to do the last damage and that's two activations spent just to get one objective. I'm putting it back in the pile for now. I think that's more a Stormcast, Fire Slayer, or Auric card. I know I could use it with Demonic Weapon, or if I'd had Festering Blades in and I was lucky, but I'm just not going for an offensive deck this time around with Skaven. I'm going after objectives, and whilst I have got great strength in my deck, that's more to try and combine it with Demonic Weapon, and if the two don't come out together when I need them, I'm probably going to bin one or the other, or both even, depending on how things are going. So that's it, that's my deck. I'm going after more objectives, but I've still got a few non-objective based cards in there, such as Cover Ground and Escalation, Master of War, those kind of things. The only card in there that I think might be tricky to score now might be Master of War. You've got to do three different things. Ploy Master, you've got to do three things as well, and Supremacy, you've got to do three things as well. But I think that those are easier to do without as much interference from your opponent. If you're not doing well, you just don't have the glory to buy the upgrades, and if you, the ploys don't drop out, then you're just going to be screwed with Master of War. So it's more of my deck for the minute, because I feel it's a nice card to have that maybe my opponent can't influence too much, but we'll see how it goes. So that's my deck. Hope you guys like what I've picked. Let me know if you think there's anything I should put in there. Should I put in Bodyguard for a price on Kirk and keep him hugging Scritch the whole time, maybe? Should I put in Hero Slayer, maybe? Get rid of a Demonic Weapon? Mm, decisions, decisions, and ready for action. Should I put that back in to try and get it off with Spores of Battle to get a double move off? It's another sprint almost. It could be useful. 
much chin scratching going on from me, but we'll play this deck out and we'll see how it goes, and maybe I'll make a few more tweaks and adjustments. So let me know what you think, let me know what you'd have, let me know what you'd get rid of, and wish me luck. Bye!